and you know, acid content decides how proteins are going to be formed. So there are uh, properties, whether acid-based properties and all other properties of the amino acids, being aromatic, being aliphatic, having cysteine, uh, having sulfur in their structure, and not all of these affects protein structure. And we have of types, we might have, you know, thousands or even hundreds of thousands types of proteins in each cell. Not hundred thousand proteins, hundred thousands type, thousands of types of proteins. But can anybody tell me, for each protein, how many molecules do you think exist in a cell? Bohajore protein. Shinari molecule can you protein a chinek in the haneka? Which create can he is a tiny olam that off? Beast. Beast, what do you say? Give me some numbers. Idea? Any idea? Anything? Bolefe? Penja? Anything else? Anyone else? Oksuna? Four? Sixty-four? Where do you get these numbers? No, but I can't answer to me, Nanayaka. Sixty-four? What's sixty-five, maybe? No, no, I don't know what anybody is. I don't know what anybody is. I don't know what anybody is. Bueno, bueno, hoy me tiene visto. Bueno, no sé si me llama ya tú. No, hoy tengo una proteína, una jore. Te sabré que en general, ¿qué molécula, qué molécula de proteína hay? Bueno, bueno, ¿qué me lo digo? Me da una jore proteína que la jore es una carne. ¿Qué molécula? ¿Qué? ¿Chuara? ¿Yeka? شوف كل شوية كل شوية بس أشوف نماية بدك من بيز أحمد وأجزم توبي وتشوف كل شوية بلى بس أشوف نماية وتشوف كل شوية شو أنا أقول أخذ جماركة بيوني بشتي تروه هي بيوني بجماري بروتين وين هي إذا كنت طالب أو جماري شيء بس أول مرة جماركة كوتد جماري كودونا كان او بابا تيترا كودون كان لسر جينا كان جد كودون مان هي بجوري نيوكلو كايدا كان فاوا في وانتي با او هنا كي من اوان يوم anyone else finally يك كسيتر خولي بدا بولي سينا سيجي كان تر لكان جا امينو اسيد نيا لبروتين ما بس تم باسي جماري أمينو أسيدة كان ناكم في كل حوار باسي أكم هل بروتينة وكل من هي مغلوبينة كان لهل يكل خروك السورة كان شن هي مغلوبين من هي بل فور بل شن وان بل أفو وان مليان اي اوكي what are you all about? Yeki chi, chari chi, visti chi, panjai chi. It's hundreds of thousands, and for some proteins, about one million or you know the large numbers. Men alia lahar jore ki protein. Yawa dera ni persiara kam road na buzor bata hanekta. Lahar jore bi zahmat bi zahmat persiara kam maana yawa ya bi khoda sokta. Chi khoda ya ba ba na na kashay kuchi. Second, من أعلم لحد جوري بروتين جماري مولكولي أو بروتين جنيكا شوار سبيونت هي نيك مولكولي هي مغلوبين نك شوار هي مغلوبين من هي يك هي مغلوبين من هي بيانا خيان أمين هما بمليون ها هي وهن بيا بروتين وكو إنسولين توزي كمترة بسطان هزار هي جماري هر هر بروتين هر جوري خوك أليم فلان بروتين فلان إيش كا خو معناه هني يجدي أو بروتين معناه بتنيا دانش مو إيش كانك لا سوزان لا مثلاً لا ليكا لا شيء يجدنك يجدي لا سوزان معناه no we got hundreds of thousands and sometimes million or more than that alright so what I'm talking about here is the number of types what types for each type, there is this large number. 
Okay, so inside the cell, every cell of all creatures, it's really crowded. Okay, it's very crowded of molecules and especially mainly proteins. Okay, because I'm going to show you many structures of proteins, I wanted to explain just a little bit. What, what are these we see? Amrangu, Shaitan, Chin, Kamish. And these are the true three dimensional structure. I'm a shape rusty protein cannon. I'm a diagram here. I'm a shape. I'm a protein a quality. What do I really like here again? But I'm the camera type it. When it comes to molecules, these techniques, X-ray crystallography and nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, these are the techniques that it's like they are taking an indirect photograph of proteins through, it's very complicated, um, you know, in the case of X-ray crystallography, this is my specialty, you have to make a protein, that specific protein, you have to purify, you have to make it into crystals and then you expose it to an X-ray um, machine and then you take the refraction um, data and you use many computer programs to analyze it mathematically, what you get at the end is something called an electron map. Uh, structures which I'm going to show you 
these are where they come from. All of these are for all, only for you to have a look at, to appreciate. So all of these proteins here are represented in the main chain. It's a little single amino acid can detail So the details of each amino acid are not shown here. You can't show them. It's there. But here, this program allows you to have a, uh, you know, to see the entire three-dimensional structure of the protein, to know the final shape and to see where the active or the bonding site is and other things, features in the protein. That there is a cytochrome. This is a growth, this is growth hormone. So you can see in those two we have alpha helices a lot here. This is composed entirely of beta sheets. I'm gonna talk about this. This is an antibody, an immunoglobulin. Down there it's a retinal binding protein in the eye. This is also composing a of beta sheets. It has a special structure, canyan, chene jawaza, shape, chene jawaza. This is an enzyme. Enzymes have also a variety of structures. Okay, here we can break the jiroa. Tell me, Dr. Dudaka, but how is it done? Magmania, Anna. All right, finally, this is a chaperon. This is composed of many subunits. It's one of the very large proteins, and I'm going to talk about chaperon later on. Okay. So we have four levels of protein structure, starting from primary, ending with quaternary. Every single protein has at least three levels of structure. Primary, secondary, some can be a primary, secondary, and tertiary. Every single protein. Some proteins have another level of structures, structure which is a quaternary structure. Okay? Right. So what are these? Ama tenha was fit a bo konanakani ka protein pre awa bo oi shapey kotai doske. Konaziakam amino acidakam pekawa peptide bone, peptide bone. Make a link a bit, polypeptide chain again, there is a bit of prosage, let's just prosage on the other. Translation, prosage translation, messenger RNA translate a cable protein, lab ribosome. Do I allow, have no polypeptide chain, polypeptide chain, but she can, but she had yet chain, let DVA cut the stair cut, structure the mistake. A bit of sherry, he springy. The sherry kit, the sherry kit, the work who shall it take in a day, the sherry kit, the spring kit, and a pair of three secondary structure. Now, the speaker of four of the day. Do I want how more polypeptide chain I have? How more pepper? Shape it, it's a wow, cotai, where a day, and a pair of three tertiary structure. Basho, see the body hair, bo, bo, you know, all organization. All protein is entirely folded. So proteins have to go through. So the amino acids link together. That's primary structure. The sequence of the amino acids. Then those amino acids that making the polypeptide chain. The polypeptide chain starts having some shapes of spring shapes of alpha helices or in a you know uh, in a sheet way called beta sheets, and then they all come together to make an entire protein structure, protein conformation. And in some cases, only in some cases, uh, more than one polypeptide chain of the protein come together to make an organization. Like in the case of hemoglobin, and it's going to be a good example to explain quaternary structures better. So the primary structure is made via peptide bond, which is a covalent bond uh, made between the carboxyl carbon of one amino acid and the nitrogen of the amino acid, of the other amino acid. So these bonds, once they are made, all the amino acids in the sequence of that protein are going to be linked like that, and the polypeptide chain is made already. Of course. Yes, Ahmed, telephone time, they don't have any other channel.
Of course, we have the temple and we have the house and the What determines what amino acids exist in a certain protein and in what order is the genetic code on the genes. So this is what we mean when we talk about gene expression. A gene is a piece of DNA, the shape of the DNA, that expresses itself by having information to make a protein. The gene is transcribed into messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is then translated into proteins. Now, the very majority of genes make proteins. There are, there is, there are minority of genes that, that make only RNA. So in other words, all genes make RNA. But the majority of genes make messenger RNA, which is then translated into proteins. The minority of genes make other types of RNA, which remain as RNA, like transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, enzymatic RNA, and they function as RNA. The second level, secondary structure, this is segments, parts of the polypeptide chain and involves only the main chain atoms. It means that the side chains of the amino acids the R groups are not involved yet, not in this level, in making bonds. Hashtag. The tertiary structure, the R groups are involved finally. Secondary structure, the only bond involved in secondary structure is hydrogen bonds. Okay, between parts of the uh, amino acids, hydrogen bonds. And we have two major types of secondary structures. Alpha helices and beta sheets. So it means that proteins in parts of them are that either make a helical shape, halazuni, and then another group, then another helix, and so on, or they make sheets, basharitia, or they can have a combination of two. Okay? Shit, okay, Amaya. Always, when you describe something geometric, uh, things like that. The description sounds a little complicated, but the actual thing is not complicated. Why is it called alpha helix and not just a helix? Well, because this is the type of helix that exists in proteins mostly. There are some other types as well. Uh, what do I mean by type? Uh, by types of uh, any helix, any helical shape, it can be tight. Is a the sticky springy type of a crezor crow, a very relaxed day, a crezor part, go on ya. Oh, yeah, oh, he may be able to have a young jury to have it at a mahon hair. I don't want you to worry about this. All you need to know is it's the alpha helix and the beta sheets. We also have loops or coils. I'm going to show you. Uh, these are the irregular, they don't have a certain shape in a protein. They are important for protein flexibility. So the alpha helices are uh, the twisted part of the polypeptide chain is twisted in a helical shape. The side chain of the amino acids will be projected to the outside, okay? And the alpha helix, PO3 alpha helix, because these are the geometric components of it. It's every 3.6 amino acids, and yani almost four, every four amino acids are not sorry. And we have uh, the. Is there any problem? Okay. And we have the width of the uh, helix is 0.54 uh, nanometers. Now, beta sheets are extended part of the polypeptide. It's the same polypeptide arranged in sheet like structure. And I'm going to show you. And there are two types. It could be parallel or anti-parallel. So again, hydrogen bonds are involved here. But between the main uh, part of the polypeptide chain, again, not the side chain. Okay? So they make these. Uh, what we have, what we mean by parallel or anti-parallel, maybe the last image explains it more. It's just a chain. You just imagine 
you know, um, a chain. So you can create computer graphics in Julia for exhibition time with that. When you just make shapes with it, you could have parts of it going in the same direction or could be the other direction. That's all, parallel and anti-parallel. Um, if anybody wants more explanation later, I will explain because this is my specialty. However, as for your, what is required of you, of you uh, these structural things, as long as you just understand the very basics of it, that's enough. Uh, and I'm going to come back to it in a minute. Uh, tertiary structure, as I said, is the overall uh, three-dimensional structure. Now, the side chains of the amino acids, the R groups, are involved. They make bonds like disulfide bonds, like ionic bonds between the negative and positively charged amino acids, and uh, other bonds as well, hydrophobic and other bonds as well. Okay? So, if we look at this example, this is a protein. So, each part of this chain, all of it, this is one. Every single part here, so this is an amino acid, this is another amino acid, this is another amino acid, this is another amino acid, all of them are linked together. That's the primary structure. The secondary structure is you can see parts. Parts of the polypeptide chain has made springy shapes, another springy shapes, and sheety shapes as well. This is secondary structure. The whole thing has come together to make some sort of a spherical structure that is the tertiary structure, the three-dimensional conformation. Okay? And we also can see some loop area. Loop area. They exist in proteins, and depending on the type of proteins, some proteins will have more, some proteins will have less. And they are, all of them are, you know, they have, um, you know, important roles in the protein function. The quaternary structure is uh, when proteins are composed of more than one polypeptide chain, uh, not one polypeptide chain, and the, well, the polypeptide chains of the same protein come together to work together, okay? For example, as we will see, in the case of hemoglobin, it's composed of four subunits. So there are four, every four polypeptides of hemoglobin come together to make one entire molecule, mature molecule. Okay? Oku awaya mishtekta ewa bukan ewa hariyeki individual eka. Babayin hamuta hariyekta molecule ki hemoglobin. Basha? اگر برای مایوگلوبین بن بون بون مایوگلوبین هر مولکول کی بتنیا کاری خواهد کرد کاری کن بیا که که پیاده که هر هر یک تن آو کاری بتوانه بتنیا کرد باشه؟ اگر هیموگلوبین بن اتن کم و گروپی چهار چهار همه تن هیموگلوبین بس اتن کم و گروپی چهار 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 پیکا و دیو آو کاری کن چهار پیکا هم نیست. این در کیس اف آلبومین Every three molecules, three molecules come together, three polypeptide chains. So, if it is insulin, every six come together. If it's ferritin, uh, every twenty-four come together. So, this is the quaternary structure, and we can have either the polypeptide chains either entirely hundred percent the same, they are called homomeric, or they could could be some very slight differences because they are the same proteins. Slight differences in one or two amino acids between the different subunits that is heteromeric. Again, when we talk about hemoglobin, this is going to be more clear. So this diagram just shows again what I've gone through, the four levels of uh, protein structure. Uh, this image I'm going to talk about in details in hemoglobin.
hemoglobin, just to show you. So primary structure of hemoglobin, secondary structures, it, it has many alpha helices, doesn't have beta sheets. Tertiary structure and then the four subunits of hemoglobin A in adults come together to make the mature um, molecule. Okay. So we have protein domains. This is a little different. A protein domain is usually happens uh, to large proteins. This, these are, a domain is different from subunit. A domain is a region of the same polypeptide chain. One pro polypeptide chain, certain parts of it have certain functions. domains, like there are yeast enriched domains and other things, okay? So this is the difference. Uh, they are not separate parts, they are the same part, regions of the same polypeptide chains, and this is how they are different from subunits. I have already talked about bonds last week, about bonds in biomolecules, but I've also indicated proteins. Now we are taking it again, so these are the bonds, as a mobile unit, or bone here, bone, and a bone here. A peptide bond. Peptide bond is a covalent bond. It uh, exists, it makes the primary structure, as I said. Hydrogen bond is responsible for the secondary structure. And also it exists in tertiary and quaternary levels, hydrogen bonds here. Ionic bonds between negative and positive charge, these exist in tertiary structures. Maybe in some cases quaternary, but that's the tertiary. Disulfide bonds between two cysteine amino acids and hydrophobic interactions. Hydrophobic interactions are those interactions, we have it in last week, interactions between hydrophobic or nonpolar amino acids. Okay? Nonpolar amino acids in an aqueous solution, they try to hide themselves from the water environment. So they kind of try to come cluster together and they have this. Uh, hydrophobic interactions between them and van der Waals, I explained last week. It exists in all atoms, all molecules. Okay. This diagram shows there uh, we have, of course, the peptide bonds that make the entire chain. We have the alpha helix, beta sheets, and some other bonds like disulfide bonds, uh, salt bridge or uh, high, high ionic interactions, and other interactions. Majority of proteins are globular. Globular means that they have a general uh, globular spherical shape. Safriban Bali Koralia should be protein. Zolini protein uh, But there are some groups of proteins that have they are organized in certain ways to have fibrous structures. So fibrous structures, for example, collagen keratin, elastin, and those proteins. And uh, they have, the fibrous proteins have structural uh, functions to provide support to the connective tissues, for example. Whereas the globular proteins have, you know, the majority of other functions. Sometimes membrane proteins can be classified as a different group. Um, some references classify them as a type of globular proteins, and in general, they do have a globular shape. However, because they exist in membranes, so in a highly lipid environment, so they can't actually be uh, classified as a different class. Both cases are true, okay. So when a protein assumes its three-dimensional shape, it, this is called protein folding. So a protein that has the first, the second, the three, the uh, third level of uh, tertiary structures, I mean, this is a folded protein. Why do proteins have these shapes? Actually, I don't know the rest of the protein. Any idea? Bofunctional care. Yeah, bofunctional care. Awesome. That's a correct answer. If they don't shape like this, they will not be functional. An open polypeptide chain is a non-functional protein. But I mean, what does, what forces 
supporting to take the shape. She will be a company. And last part. And I will join. Oh, I can. I got any book. Yeah. Hydrophobic. Bo. Zorbasta. Bo. The main force, the main thing that pushes proteins to start folding spontaneously. Yani am shaypana this pick up protein crab ba lahoyo a drustebe. Balam hanya protein how kari ziadian ewe, how kari kan la re shapiransa, as I'm the CH Mr. Oba special loss of him. Bor is my friend. Okay? Shapirons. Molecular chaperones are these large proteins. They themselves are proteins. They help other proteins to fold. Fold properly. Hoi protein is a friend. Oh, I'm sure. I got a little bit. protein, they start, all proteins, they will start folding spontaneously. Some of them require a help to continue the folding and to reach the final fold. The spontaneous thing that pushes them to fold is the hydrophobic amino acids, the nonpolar amino acids. Why? Because proteins will exist in the cytosome. They are made in the cytosome, the, in the ribosome. So it is in a, they are in an acquired solution. That means the nonpolar amino acids will try to hide themselves to get away from the water. So they start this movement by the, of the protein of the polypeptide chain. This will start the protein folding. So in a spring structure, the alpha helix, this is because it contains some hydrophobic amino acids, not polar amino acids, that try to hide themselves on the inside of the helical structure. Okay? Right. So this is what causes proteins to fold. Post-translation modification is the chemical changes that happen to proteins that causes the remaining of the fold. Yeah, if fold can do stevia, shape can do stevia. Changoran kariya ki kemista the eukaryotic system, eukaryotic cells. There are some changes, chemical changes to the majority of proteins in human. It's only the albumins that don't go through these processes, all other proteins go through them to stabilize the fold. Okay? For example, phosphorylation of some proteins. For example, glycolation of some proteins to make them into glycoproteins. Uh, some proteins become glycolipids, yani, uh, adding a short chain of carbohydrate or fa uh, fatty acids to one or two parts of the protein. Um, some proteins have some other changes, okay? So, where does this happen? Any idea? Let you know what that is. Okay? It is a ribosome, but I'm sorry, let you know what that is. Okay? Golgi, yeah. In Golgi department, Golgi apparatus, most of these processes happen. Anyway, so this are, these are processes to keep this, okay? The opposite of protein folding is protein denaturation. So a protein that has lost its fold is a denatured, natural, natured, natural, denatured protein. And a denatured protein is a protein that has lost its secondary and tertiary. Of course, if it has a quaternary structure, it will lose that as well. But for general proteins, it has lost the secondary, the tertiary, but not the, uh, uh, the primary structure. Why is that? Any idea? Because it's a covalent bond. Peptide bonds are covalent bonds. It's true that sulfide bonds are only covalent, also covalent. But on the herpetinica, if they have, if there is a sulfide bonds, they could 
be two, three, or a few more. But there are so many numbers of peptide bonds, and peptide bonds are a type of covalent bonds stronger than disulfide bonds. So covalent bonds are strong. Okay? That is why it is very difficult to break the actual polypeptide chain. And that is why a denaturing of protein is a reverse, reverse, uh, sorry, reversible process. So proteins which have denatured, they can actually be folded again. Once the environment or the factors that have causes, caused its denaturing are removed. Okay? But of course, this is true only in the, those environments we are talking about that cause nature are not very extreme. So let's have a look at some of those things. Okay, first of all, here, a protein that has an entire structure, this is a folded protein, a protein which is disordered, it could go to a level of this polypeptide chain being entirely open, entirely uh, linear. And the arrow indicates that it is a reversible process. Okay, so changes in temperature, changes in pH. pH affects the amino acids, as we have talked about in today's uh, study session. And as a result, it will affect the protein. Some chemicals. Okay, and as I said, this, this process is often reversible. Now, Every single protein might be denatured. But there are some diseases which are particularly related to protein denaturing, like Alzheimer's, like Parkinson's, and so on. The main reason is the defaulting, uh, denaturing of proteins. And we have We have a group of proteins, uh, sorry, a group of diseases, PNO3 prion diseases. Does anybody have an idea what are prion diseases? Or give me an example. But, oh yeah, what is that one? Yeah, well done. Chia, oh chia, what's your common name, Kachia? Mad cow disease in human. Okay. Um, prion diseases are very strange type of diseases. She deserves her type attack. Beza, Ahmed, be attentive. Go with her. Um, it's protein and foldable. It's unfolded proteins. But not only the proteins are becoming unfolded, they they them. It's also the proteins become infectious agents. This is very strange. Because what causes infections are actually microorganisms, organisms like viruses, bacteria. But for a protein on its own to become infectious, this is strange. And there are other um, diseases as well. I hope in a, um, in a chance I'll talk to you a little bit about it because they are very interesting. Anyway, so what are the things that cause uh, protein denaturing? High temperatures affect all type of ones in proteins. Extreme pH usually affect hydrogen and interactor, uh, inter sorry, ionic bonds. Uh, organic solvents affect the hydrophobic salts at high concentrations, affect mainly ionic bonds. We have chaotropic agents like sodium dolicyl sulfate, like high concentration of urea, guanidine hydrochloride. They affect mostly hydrophobic interactions and the disulfide bond reducers, methacroethanol and diethylphenol. Um, UV, sorry, and uh, mechanical agitation. So if you are working in a lab with a protein, you're doing research, and if you make, shake it a lot, it makes bubbles, you have destroyed your protein. So uh, mechanical agitation, that's what it means, okay. So all of these, 
will not affect the peptide bond unless very extreme. At the source of extreme, you know, my answer, but I will keep temperature. Temperature the home is at the organic solvent to salt or another zahmet. Hatta at the source of they won't affect the peptide bond. But high temperature, yeah, it can very high. It can even break the peptide bond. But not extremely high temperature. Only high temperature. Yeah, it can affect only the secondary and tertiary. Okay. Do you want a break now, or shall we talk a little bit and then I give you a break? It's up to you. Come on, let me go. Come on, come on. No, no, no. Come on, let's go. Ah, what do you want? Shall we take a short break now? Bash. Let's go. 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 Let